Bone age assessment is a fundamental tool in terms of clinical assessment of any child with endocrine disorders. Its importance is cannot be emphasized, but unfortunately, lack of awareness or interest in part of radiologist results in less than accurate and less than appropriate bone age assessment often resulting in confusion as far as clinical diagnosis is concerned. This emphasizes the need for a clinician treating a child with endocrine disorder to have a fundamental idea about evaluation of bone age and interpreting that in light of growth and pubertal parameters. So we'll try to look into bone age assessment in a simplistic manner answering three key questions which have to be answered by a clinician who has to assess bone age as to when, how and what. So when do we need to do a bone age? Coming from a pediatric endocrinologist, I would say that pretty much every patient who comes to me would require a bone age assessment. Be it an individual who comes to us with short stature and parents want to know how much growth is left looking into predicted height like precocious puberty or short stature. Evaluation for response to therapy, particularly things like GnRH analog therapy in the setting of a precocious puberty child, to look at how the GnRH analogs have uh, halted the progression of bone age, to look for time for intervention as in treatment with growth hormone therapy, and particularly to decide about how long to continue therapies which are improving as far as growth is concerned. So pretty much any child who has a pediatric endocrine disorder would require bone age assessment at some point or the other. However, what are the usual bone age results that we see? And I'll just sample a few which I've seen over the last month only, ranging between 3 to 10 years. So we have a 7-year-old girl who has precocious puberty. You want to know the bone age, it's reported as 3 to 10 years. It's as... Uh, good as uh, useless from 10 to 17 years and this one will take the cake out of it is no evidence of fracture or rickets. So I think the basic suggestion which should be given for radiologists would be to really put a default of 0 to 99 years as far as bone age assessment is concerned. In that case, it will be 100% sensitive, specific and have perfect uh, validity and accuracy. Having said that, it really makes sense that we as pediatricians need to be aware about how to assess bone age and at least in a broad sense have reasonable idea in a margin which is relevant as far as clinical practice is concerned. So how do we assess bone age? When we look at bone age, what we are trying to do is to compare the maturation of bones as compared to a population reference. So selecting an appropriate site is extremely important. Knee is a site which is used only for newborns and this is re reserved for use in congenital hypothyroid children to assess whether there is any intrauterine effect of hypothyroidism. So if there is no epiphysis in the lower end of femur or upper end of tibia, it would indicate that there is a significant intrapartal thyroid deficiency. For most part of clinical practice, it is the non-dominant wrist or hand, often called as left wrist and hand, which is considered to be significant. And we would be laying a lot of emphasis in terms of evaluation of this x-ray. Just a couple of words regarding how to get the x-ray done. It should be done with the hand, which is widespread. And the x-ray should cover distal part of both radius and ulna and all the fingers and we will discuss later on as to how small bones are more important in this regard. So we need to cover all the bones. Often we see x-rays which are cut and we can't really look into the distal phalanges. Elbow is more for epiphyseal fusion and we are looking at that would not make much sense as far as clinical practice because we want to pick up children at an earlier stage rather than a late stage of epiphyseal fusion. So now, what are we really looking at when you're looking at a radiological x-ray for bone age assessment? What we're trying to basically look at is basically how the epiphysis and the metaphysis are maturing. So epiphysis is the part of bone which will be separated by an osteoid which has not, not been calcified and how the epiphysis and the growth plate is progressing. What fundamentally we need to understand is that maturation is a proximal to distal process, while fusion is in the reverse direction. 
So in earlier age group, we are looking at bones which are in the proximal end. So we're talking about carpals, metacarpals, which will be relevant in the first four years of life. While when we talk about later stages, it becomes more important to look at distal bones because they will predict us earlier as far as epiphyseal fusion and the timing which is required. Now, what are the various methods which are available for assessment? We have got very standard methods which are available like the Grulich Pile Atlas in which we have a comprehensive atlas for different ages for both boys and girls which can then be compared to the x-ray and a particular bone age can be assigned. These are of course cumbersome and require some level of expertise. Tanner Whitehouse method is considered to be the gold standard and it requires evaluation of 20 bone size to really have a reasonable idea as far as the accurate bone age is concerned. It provides a specific score which then corresponds to different ages of skeletal maturation. It's even possible to calculate standard deviation scores for this group. But this is a very comprehensive process and would require approximately 20 to 30 minutes per bone age assessment. So if a busy pediatrician starts doing a Tanner White House method, in every child who comes to him with pediatric endocrine problems, he would soon not become, not remain busy and would not have lots of time to look at the x-ray. So it's not really a practical way to go forward. And wherever I go to different colleges and discuss, there are non-standard methods in which people will use the number of carpal bones and plus a particular figure of an x which is considered to be uh, very significant in some places two carpal bones would mean one year in some places two carpal bones would mean two years so there's a huge variability as far as how we assess bone age and there is a significant need to really <coughs> devise a criteria for assessment of bone age just to illustrate the difficulties as far as standard methods are concerned this is the tanner white house method which is uh, used and it shows the main region of interest in main bones. It only shows 11 sites and you can see it's such a complicated process. We need at least around 20 sites to look at it. So this is not really practical as far as clinical perspective is concerned, at least for a pediatrician's perspective. For those who have lots of money, there is automated bone age available in the form of bone expert, but it is very prohibitively expensive and cannot be applicable in India at the moment but this would be a way to future you can have a mobile application which takes a picture and you get the bone age. So till that time this happens we need to have a practical easily available tool which we can be done in less than a minute to have a reasonable idea about bone age. And this is what we will try to learn over the next 5 to 10 minutes. So now the first question is once you have this x-ray you need to know which site to really focus. So which part of the x-ray is most important as far as clinical assessment is concerned for bone age. Now most people think that it's the carpal bones and the distal end of radius and ulna which is most important. I will however would like to really state at the beginning that this is the least important part as far as assessment of a radiograph. The most important part is obviously the distal part, the small bones and how the small epiphysis and metaphysis are in comparison to each other and that gives us a much better information as far as bone age assessment is concerned. We should remember that maturation as discussed earlier occurs from a proximal to a distal manner while fusion occurs from a distal to proximal manner. So therefore the importance of different sites would really depend upon the age at which we are looking at the radiograph. So for infants up to the age of approximately 3 years it's the carpals which are definitely relevant but beyond that in childhood it's the uh, proximal interpharyngeal joints which are important and during puberty it's the intermediate and distal interpharyngeal joints which become significant as far as the assessment is concerned. So one needs to keep into perspective as to which age we are looking at and focus on that particular part of the x-ray. What we need to understand also is that as in many phases of life Girls are more advanced than boys by on an average of around 1 to 2 years and this is because of higher levels of estrogen in girls as compared to boys during different phases of maturation even in the prepubertal stage. So now we start off as to how to look at bone age. For infants it's very easy. We can use our 
non-standard formulas which are often in vogue as far as medical colleges are concerned in terms of looking at the bones and this is for males as we can see that by one year we will typically have the distal radial epiphysis coming in and there will be two carpal bones which have appeared. In girls you as you see there will be more maturation and there would be some epiphysis which are appearing particularly in the proximal interpharyngeal and the metacarpophalangeal region. In toddlers between 2 to 3 years what we are really looking at is the small bones which are appearing in the phalanges and metacarpal and as we can see that as age progresses we will have greater number of bones which are appearing and by 3 years we will have all the small bones which are appearing as far as boys are concerned and girls will have a much bigger picture as far as progression is concerned. So it's relatively easy during infancy and in toddler age group to really assess bone age. The problem really starts from around 4 to 14 years and that's the most challenging time when a child presents with endocrine problem to a clinician. And in this period I would say one single thing which has to be looked into and compared is the size of the epiphysis compared to the metaphysis. So what we are really looking at is the small epiphysis what is the size of this epiphysis as compared to the metaphysis? So as age progresses from around 4 years to around 8 years, the epiphysis is much smaller at around 4 years. It gradually increases in size to become slightly smaller compared to the metaphysis by around 8 years of life. And if you look at the same picture, we can see in the simplified bone age diagram, that by around 7 years in boys, the epiphysis is slightly smaller compared to the metaphysis. In girls, of course, it will be slightly larger, but it's still smaller as compared to boys. The same trend continues over time. So in mid-puberty, we find that epiphysis now around 8 years of age was smaller. At 10, is roughly equivalent. And by around 12 to 14 years, it becomes bigger compared to the metaphysis and starts capping it. So this is the start of fusion and this we can see with the simplified x-ray as well. So if you really look at and trace the size of epiphysis of small bones, it will give us a very important information about the reasonable idea. We can have a plus minus one to two year range as far as bone age is concerned and that's pretty reasonably effective as far as clinical practice is concerned and we will try to look in some of the illustrations which are there subsequently to look into those factors. What about late puberty? In late puberty clearly when we are talking about we are talking beyond 14 years of age it's usually epiphyseal fusion. So in girls by the bone age of around 14 years and in bo boys a bone age of around 16 years would mean that around 99% growth has already been achieved. So in boys, as we see that by around 16 years, the bones have nearly fused and not much growth potential is left. So this is a simplified bone age uh, sheet which is available for both boys on the left hand side and girls on the right hand side which can be taken out as a printout and we can compare and if we have the basic principle in mind as far as looking into the smaller bones or the carpal bones in the first year of life. The smaller bones in the proximal and distal interpharyngeal joints between 2 to 4 years of age and the size of epiphysis compared to metaphysis between 4 to 14 years of age with being smaller below 10 years of age increasing beyond 12 capping and fusing by around 13 14 years of age we will have a reasonable idea of having bone age assessment. Having said that now we will go into exercises. This is a 12 year old boy who presented with short stature and we have to look at the bone age. A boy is 12 year old, so which bones we'll look at? We'll look at the epiphysis of the smaller bones and what we find that they are really, really small. And now if we look at the carpal bones, there are only four carpal bones which have really appeared, no ulnar epiphysis. So it's a very small four and a half year old bone age. So it indicates that this child actually has a very, very pathological cause maybe hypothyroidism or a growth hormone deficiency. Next exercise is a 16 year old boy who has growth hormone deficiency on growth hormone therapy. Do you think there is much time left? So if you look at the whole this thing, all the small bones have really fused. The radius and ulna have also nearly fused. 
So what it tells us is that the bone age is approximately 16 years, 99% growth has been achieved, there is no point wasting money in trial growth hormone treatment is concerned. Six year old girl with precocious puberty and this is the bone x-ray and if you look at it, uh, what is the bone age? If you look at the epiphysis and metaphysis, epiphysis are definitely at least as large or slightly larger. We have number of carpal bones which have already appeared and this looks like a stage of 11 years. So clearly this girl has precocious puberty which is progressive, has advanced bone age. She will really end up short if we don't give treatment and therefore the bone age is really healthy.